What's up, everybody? Leroy Jenkins here, coming at you with a brand new Valorant video. And in this video, we're gonna be breaking down how Sentinels got absolutely destroyed by a Dark Horse team in Built by Gamers. There are many things that Sentinels did wrong and some really crazy things that Built by Gamers did right that I think every single one of us could learn from, not just understanding why the supposed best team in all of NA actually just got destroyed, 13-5 twice in both maps, but also for our own games because there are many mistakes that they're making here that I'm sure many of us have also made. So I'm gonna break all that down. Make sure you watch to the end, smash the like, and subscribe. And if you want more in-depth breakdowns, analysis, and so much damn content, we got tons of it on the Game Leap website down below. We have step-by-step -step guides that are designed to help you climb to Immortal and beyond. So do us a favor, go check it out right now down below. But without further ado, let's jump into the video. Now, Sentinels is actually notoriously known as the best team in NA. They recently won Masters, and they actually lost to a relatively unknown team in Built by Gamers, as we talked about. And this was not close. This was a 13 and five loss on both maps, Haven and Ascent. So let's really break these down and figure out why a quote unquote top team would get absolutely destroyed so hard. Now, before we jump into the analysis, let's take a look at the composition comparison. So Sentinels is actually playing a traditional composition. The Cypher, Omen, Sova, Jet, Phoenix, they played this composition up against 100 Thieves in Masters when they won. And it's pretty par for the course. Nothing that is really different than what they normally play. Now, BBC, <clears throat> I mean, BBG actually is playing a little bit untraditional with Omen, Killjoy, Silver, Jet, and Reyna. The double duelist in Jet and Reyna, and then the Killjoy over the Cypher, it's typically a personal preference type thing. Now, in this first pistol round that I wanted to break down, I'm not sure if this is just a blatant lack of respect, but Zoms pushes in here without Sick being in a refrag position. Sick even has Molly to flush the right corner box, which he actually does later after Zom gets killed, and a joint play here would have been an easy Reyna kill and probably a one round with the enemy Killjoy being one HP. Now on top of that, Zom's actually wide swings out like he's expecting Sick to be on point with him, which is just not true. Now, as a big takeaway for you, in your games often you need to make sure that you and your ally are in the same page with aggression versus utility use. It's either, hey, we're gonna use utility, force them out, or we're going to push in aggressively and joint swing them. You can't have one person doing one thing and one person doing the other. And in ranked games, I understand this happens, but you can communicate in a certain way to make sure it doesn't happen, and it happens a lot less. But when we're talking about Sentinels, it should never happen, right? Constant communication with each other, realistically, this should not have happened at all. Now, ultimately for your ranked games, it's typically good to relay to your ally what you wanna do and then play off what they actually do. So if they're passive and using their abilities, play more passive. If they're aggressively pushing in, push in with them. Either way, typically going in or doing what your ally is doing is better than just trying to do a completely separate thing from them. Now we saw an example of what Sentinels did wrong, but now let's break down an example of what BBG did right. I'm gonna play this clip and then I'm gonna go back step by step and break down everything that they did that I was really impressed with. Roll it. So, covering all their bases, and Sentinels actually has some mid control as well now, so they actually at least could get some early intel, maybe pose a, a slight early threat, but it seems like BBG has some good protocols in place to handle it. Do they know about this jet, though? Now they do. <laughs> they, they definitely do now. Unfortunately, Tens not able to find too much there. Dapper still able to pick one up, classic in hand, and walking away with a bit of HP, just trying to be a thorn in this side and, and hoping to hurt this bonus. They've done it for a couple of members, but BBG. Now notice how they worked up mid and they hold position up top of Cat and below, but the cubby underneath Cat where Tens is, they actively drone it out. Now this seems like a really, really strange place to drone at first glance. I mean, they would typically save drone to, you know, take tree or mid control. But that being said, BBG has done their research in a way that Scent could just not do their research because they couldn't analyze BBG. I'm going to talk about that a little bit later. But they know that Scent likes to play untraditionally aggressive, especially in a save round to potentially clutch up. You see, what Tens is doing here is an all-in position. 
He has teammates close by that could play off him if he manages to clutch up, but what Tens is essentially doing here is he's playing in a really untraditional position with a weapon, the Sheriff, capable of one-shotting even up against armor. Because he has the possibility to completely pop off here, get multiple kills, and his team would push in and follow suit, and they might be able to win. And Sentinels is known for doing this, and especially now that they picked up Tens, they do this a lot more. Now, typically, this is a very strong strategy that can get Sentinels a lot of kills, and does get Sentinel a lot of kills, and it's something that you could incorporate in your games when you're on a save round where you're untraditionally aggressive holding an angle that is very very aggressive kind of all in by nature and then have your teammates ready to follow up because it's okay to be more risky when you're at a disadvantage because that's one of the only ways that you can make up the slack or the distance between your kits and the enemy kits is by being over aggressive and catching the enemy off guard now even though that's a really strong strategy the actual direct counter to a very strong untraditional aggressive position is a very untraditionally cautious ability checking playstyle where you take really passive positions you use your abilities very aggressively to clear out angles that maybe people are pushed up aggressively in and it pays off huge for them tens get spotted out with the drone they get to the trade out on him and then once they learn where dapper is they paranoia him nano swarm him and dash him for an easy kill and they secure that numbers advantage three two and ultimately clutch up the round this was extremely good ability use and coordination and an amazing counter strat tech by BBG, who not only knew that Sentinels was going to try something like that, but put in the ability resources to stop or punish this type of aggressive positioning and potential playmaking. Now jumping way ahead, this is a poach 1v4. Some of you might have seen this already, but we're going to play it again because it's so freaking cool. So let's roll it and then we're going to break it down. Let's roll it. And one player along the way, poach only man standing and... We've seen some clutches, but this... Okay, come on now. Poach, able to find two. Paranoia might find the third. He does do just that. Now in a 1v1, needs to find Zoms, and he is very healthy and rearing to do so. Looking to clutch to the back of the site. <gasps> playing the ring around the Rosie and a 4K for Poach to clutch it up for a two-round lead. Now, as cool as this was by Poach, this is inexcusable from the side of Scent, and it shows many mistakes made by Scent as a roster, and this loss right here actually shifted the momentum for this map so hard against Scent. If this went differently, in my opinion, the entire series could have went differently because of how important this round was. Now on top of that, I'm sure many of you have lost in scenarios like this where on paper you had every advantage but still lost. So let's break this down step by step to realize what Sentinels could have done better and what we could do better in our games as well. Now first off, I gotta give credit to Dapper a little bit because he was the one that gathered the information. In my opinion, he's the one that misplayed the least here and I think gathering information is fine. However, Tens directly challenges afterwards and no one else. When Dapper dies, challenging again a little bit later is extremely risky, and Tens is essentially giving Poach no respect here, which in my opinion is a poor play. What could have been done instead, or what should have been done instead? Tens could have just not peeked and took that information in, or Dapper could have soft peeked at the beginning and not dying. However, that was going to be a little bit difficult because he had no idea that Poach was there, unlike Tens, who did have that information. After they got that information, they could have potentially set up a crossfire where it would have been impossible for Poach to win and just ensured the round win, or they could have joint swung as three players and for sure got the refrag on him, but they didn't do that either. They only committed Dapper and Tens here, and they put them in a really bad 2v1 scenario when one of your players has a sheriff in zombs now poach is going to play here pretty well where he's going to paranoia the right side and hit zombs and then he's going to push to the left now this is going to effectively get zombs to back off however this is really bad for shazam as it puts him in a 50 50. now with zombs not having a weapon he only has that sheriff not a rifle up against poach who does have a rifle in my personal opinion putting yourself in a 1v1 scenario is absolutely horrible and should be something that you should avoid at all costs i think it's far better for zombs once he gets paranoid to push up and hold the close angle so that poach can only commit to one side either the left where shazam is or the right where zombs is this way he can either bait for shazam and shazam could tuck a little bit more into the corner so he'll get seen first or he could potentially refrag him with a close enough effective range to see poach once poach reveals himself even though he is paranoid essentially as a big takeaway for you they were extremely sloppy with the way they committed to these duels and this kind of reflected a lot of what happened in the previous breakdown when we saw the disconnect between zombs and six 
Olympic when they were trying to tank point and pistol round. It really seems like the communication was just not there or players were quickly pivoting their decisions later on because they either got nervous or scared or wanted to play more passive but effectively they were just disconnected from each other and they were not being a cohesive team making decisions together in a way that we've seen them in the past up against 100 thieves and things like that so what is my final takeaway and why do i think that sentinels overall lost this entire series well sentinels in my opinion was really off their game i don't think that they were playing to their traditional level. You see, BBG played really well and had some amazing set executions with each other, and also, BBG obviously studied Sentinels in a way that Sentinels could not study BBG. Perhaps part of the reason that Sentinels was completely off their game comm-wise is they didn't have enough pre-planning up against BBG. They couldn't study their strategy, so Shazam was having to figure them out on the fly, is what I'm guessing, and it put a lot more pressure on him and on the team as a whole to play in a way that were Worked well together and maybe after some time some studying a little bit of grinding a little bit of VOD review they're going to be able to come back and just crush this team because it just seemed like they were not playing to 100%. I know that they could play much better than this. Now, all in all, where does that leave Sentinels? Well, actually, Sentinels only has one more chance to qualify in the next Challengers event, and there's a lot of teams in that event that are freaking powerhouses. I mean, we're talking FaZe, we're talking Gen G, anything could happen, and I know that Sentinels wants to qualify, so it's gonna be freaking crazy. A goddamn battle royale. But definitely let me know what you think happened in this series. Why do you think Sentinels lost? Do you think they were just playing really poorly? Were there any individual players that you thought were not doing that great? Or do you think as a whole, the team was really lacking? And why do you think that is? I really want to know your insight and opinion in the comments down below. And if you want more in-depth analysis just like this, go to the Game League website down below because we have tons and tons of breakdowns, meta videos, esports content, and much more. If you really want to level up your game and climb in Valorant as a result so easily, then you got to go check it out in the links down below but that's all i got for you today thank you so much for coming by i freaking love your faces and i'll see you tomorrow